Crafting the introduction of a song with a memorable guitar part is a difficult thing to do. There should be an identifiable instrumental hook called the signature that begins the song. It's usually a combination of a melodic line and the chord progression. Now, I don't mean songs like Landslide that just picks through the chords. <laughs> That's a great part on its own, but it's not really a melodic hook. In this video, I'm going to count down my top 20 acoustic guitar intros of all time. Coming in at number 20 is a song that actually strums the chords, but the strumming part is really the entire hook of the song. It also uses these sus chords, sus2 and sus4 chords. <laughs> Coming in at number 19 was a 1974 number one hit, and the song is in the Grammy Hall of Fame. Coming in at number 18 is from this particular artist's debut record, and it's the only song in the entire list that's in an odd time signature. Coming in at number 17 is a song that was released in 1973 and it was from this artist record entitled You Don't Mess Around With Jim. Coming in at number 16 is a song that is actually a little bit obscure unless you know Alice in Chains but it really sounds like the grunge era and it's a killer intro. Coming in at number 15 is from the 1969 rock opera Tommy, where Pete Townsend demonstrates how many chords you can play in a row with F sharp in the bass. Coming in at number 14, I don't even dare play it. I'm going to actually use the video of this next artist, who happens to be the only person that I've actually met on this entire list. <laughs> Coming in at number 13 is a 1970 release by one of the finest acoustic guitarists ever in pop music. The song was written as a reaction to a friend's suicide. Coming in at number 12 is from the 1969 release, Abbey Road. 
It's one of George Harrison's two contributions to the album and one of the finest examples of a signature introduction hook. Intro 11 began as an instrumental guitar suite in search of a song. Well, that song, which came out in 1972, ended up being one of the most famous progressive rock songs of all time. Coming in at number 10 is a song from the mid-1960s and is also by one of the greatest fingerstyle guitarists of all time. Coming in at number nine is a song off Led Zeppelin's first album, and it's one of my favorite songs to play. Coming in at number eight is a song that was released in 1975 and is one of the most recognizable 12 string guitar parts ever. Coming in at number seven is from a song that I featured in one of my episodes of What Makes This Song Great. It was released in the mid-70s and is from one of the biggest trios of all time. Coming in at number six is actually kind of a tricky part to play because of the pull-offs, but you will recognize it immediately. Coming in at number five is a song from 1976 off this band's debut record. When I was growing up, it's a song that everyone had to learn how to play. Coming in at number four is a song that uses the entire verse melody 
in the introduction guitar part. Coming in at number three is a song that I always say is my favorite ballad of all time. And I will eventually do a What Makes This Song Great on this. Coming in at number two is a song that I can't play or say the name of, otherwise I'll take the video down, but I can play the chords and you'll know what it is. Check it out. Before we get to number one, here's a few honorable mentions that I thought really hard about putting on the list, but they didn't quite make it. Coming in at number one, well, I think you all know what it is. It really couldn't be anything else. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a first time subscriber, don't forget to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beata book, go to my website at www.rickbeata.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeata1. And if you want to support the channel even more, you can become a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.